were actually played well and got beat. No, 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 no. That's not. That's not Sunderland. You see, we, we, we when we get beat, we still play shit. Um, uh, and to those guys who have been saying that the Arsenal um, badge behind me, that happened to be there when I moved into this room. So, not an Arsenal fan, and definitely not after today. Um, hey guys, once again, back to talk to you all and ramble on for about however the hell long this video is. I don't care. Um. Judging by the fact that we've lost, you might think I'd be a bit depressed and upset again, which I tend to be practically every week, because we don't win very many games. Um, but this is the first time in a while that we've lost a game that I've actually been quite positive in, because we didn't deserve to lose today. And any anyone who tells you different, deluded. We did not deserve to lose that. You know, we had more chances than Arsenal, more clear-cut chances than Arsenal. And if you want to ask me to name any, okay, Fletcher, Watmore, Van Aanholt, Barini. Four clear-cut chances that we got to score at the Emirates. Not many teams are going to go to Arsenal and get that many chances. Um, Arsenal had three goals, yes. I'll concede the second goal was very good. The first one I would blame DeAndre Yedlin on. And generally he was alright today. Uh, but first half he was very shaky. There were two occasions where he, where he got caught out. The first one resulted in a goal. And the second one was when um, Ramsey had a shot that hit the side net in, 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 towards right before half-time. Literally right before half-time. Uh, which he shouldn't have. He shouldn't have been dilly dallying with the ball in your own final third, mate. Um, the third goal, I thought we should have defended better, but that was scrappy. But that was because we were chasing the game. To be fair, so not really much at fault there. I just felt that Sunderland's performance today um, genuinely filled me with a lot of optimism. It filled me with a lot of optimism for the season. However, we've been here before. Play well against a good team, then play a team that we should be beating, like the likes of Watford, and we we'll play shit and get beat. So I'll have to wait and see. Um, what I would say is, we played very well. The standard was good today. It's about what I what it should have been, but we need that next week. Except we need to win. Can we please? So, true, Jordy. Remember when you when you did that against Newcastle? Well, I'm doing it now. Question I've got to God, to the heavens, whoever answers this, please let Sunderland beat Watford next week. Oh, and while you're at it, can Chelsea win today? Uh, Liverpool win tomorrow, and then and then Newcastle, Bournemouth, Villa, and Norwich can all get beat next weekend. As well as Sunderland beating Watford, of course. Cheers. Thank you. Anyway, now that's done. Um, no, honestly, Sunderland actually started the game really well. Um, you know, we, we started the game really well. Uh, in midfield, Jan and Villa was a brick today. And I was really, really worried going into this game. With with Catamol out, would we be affected too much? And really, we weren't actually. Uh, we played a lot better than what I thought we would. And we had a lot more of the fucking ball than what I thought we would. It's insane. But, um... Bjarne Villa wins the ball in midfield. I think it was Bjarne Villa. He wins the ball in midfield. Duncan Watmore, who was all right today. He wasn't. He, his finishing was lackluster. His final decision making wasn't great. But other than that, wasn't good rather. But other than that, he actually did all right. He wins the ball and it's in the centre circle. Then produces a wonderful through ball pass, whichever you call it, to Barini. Not quite one on one, but it was a big chance to score. And you can tell Barini's not got much confidence on him at the moment because he just shoots pretty much at pet check. It was a routine save. And I was screaming my head out because I went to my friend's house to watch it. I was screaming my head at the TV. How on earth are you missing that man? Paid 10 million for you and you missed that. <laughs> now, Barini, I'm still happy we've got him, by the way, just to clarify that. But we we started the game really well. Uh, we had a couple of decent, you know, and we were maintaining quite a bit of the ball. We looked composed on the ball. We looked, you know... We, we just looked generally solid. We didn't look... First 30 minutes, four Arsenal scored. Weren't threatened. We were a brick in defence. We were not threatened whatsoever. Then one admittedly good good over-the-top ball um, through to Joel Campbell. He's pretty much not running one-on-one, -on -one, but he's running at Pantelemon. Drills it. Back of the net. 1-0 Arsenal. Completely undeserved. It was really undeserved. And, you know, to be fair to him, right, Yedlin did all right in the second half. But in this game, like I said earlier in the video... Ball watching. He was caught. He watching the street. He was caught ball watching as the ball was played through to um, Joel Campbell. You, you, you've got to cut that out. And I said before the game today, if we're going to get anything out of this game, we cannot make any stupid defensive errors. And while we didn't make any overtly stupid defensive errors, we were there, there were a couple of really silent defensive errors that didn't really go noticed as much. Yedlin should have tracked um, Joel Campbell there. He should have looked behind. He did look behind him, and he didn't get any close to him. He did not get closer to him, and that was very annoying because that was half an hour's work of good defending ruined by one lapse in concentration in the first half. You know, 
And Arsenal had again had more of the ball, but didn't really do anything with it. I mean, to be honest, Arsenal were very average. They were bang out of bang ordinary today. Exactly the same when they came to went to the stadium like last season and won two 0 But that was only because Sunderland decided to give them two assists and not even get a point. You know, but um, today Arsenal were bang average. But to be fair to them, right? What I will say for Arsenal, they needed that win because of what's happened the last couple of months. About the last three games, they hadn't won. Um, and they had a, they've got a big Champions League decider make or break for them on uh, Wednesday against Olympiacos, but that's a different matter altogether. One one, the goal that was one one um, came a very kind of a bit of fortune for Sunderland, but like I said in a Roka Report vid, um, article I wrote in midweek, we don't get much luck, so don't anyone dare tell me Sunderland get all the luck because we don't. Um, a ball comes in from Jan and Villa, so and that produces a good three free kick. Ola Toivonen, who I have slated a lot before today. He had one decent game against Villa when he when he was there. But other than that, did nothing. He's done nothing. His performance against Newcastle was atrocious. Um, but today, he produced a nice little flick on with his, ankle, with his foot or his ankle, whichever. Around the same area of the body. Uh, and then Giroud decided to suddenly decide he's playing for Sunderland, thankfully. And then back and then sort of heals the ball with his, with his foot into the back of his own net. Past Petr Cech. Petr Cech could have not stopped that. And me and my friends went absolutely ballistic when we scored because we deserved it. We deserved to go in level at half time, and we would, and we nearly, but we nearly went in at half time two one down because, again, thanks to DeAndre Yedlin, dilly dallying with the ball in his own final third, which you don't ever do at the Emirates or Stamford Bridge, Etihad, Old Trafford, White Hart Lane, Anfield, Goodison, anywhere that's. Any team that's good, you do not dally dilly dally in your own final third. Do the basics. Hoof it. Or if if um Oxley Chamberlain is on you, whoever it was, get a corner, get a goal kick out of it for fuck's sake. But anyway, uh, Oxley Chamberlain, I think it was either Oxley Chamberlain, Ramsey or Ozil, gets through. No, it wasn't Ozil, because um whoever it was gets through, passes to Ramsey, somehow hits the side end. Warning shot. We got lucky there. Then second half comes along. Sunderland are still pressing Arsenal. And we had a very good chance at 2-1 to go 2-1 up. A corner comes in. Jan and Villa again, who takes the main set pieces in the absence of Larson. Corner comes in. Fletcher is is pretty much battling with um, Permit Saka to get to the ball first. Wins the battle. Heads it. Had Perker Cech not been on the line, that would have been 2-1 to Sunderland. Had we gone 2-1 up, I bet you we would have got something to do. Because Arsenal's heads would have dropped at that point. But in fairness to Perker Cech, he did all right. Um, and then to be fair to him, this is the, the, the second goal was classic counter-Arsenal. Pass, 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 cross in, Drew header, firm header, 2-1. Drew, you had already redeemed yourself, mate, when you put when you put us level. Why did you have to turn to the dark side of the force and become Darth Giroud and then put Arsenal back in front? I don't know. But I mean to be fair, I'm not gonna criticize the defence for that. I think Kabul maybe could have tried to head that a bit more, but that's been hypercritical at best. So that was just a good Arsenal goal for me. Um and then afterwards we and then we had another good chance to score. A through ball goes to Duncan Watmore. Similar similar angle from when he scored against Stoke last week. Runs through. Beats the Arsenal defence. I told you. Put Duncan Watmore on. Per Mertesaka and Koscielny. But particularly Mertesaka. They're slow. They're not quick. You know. So Arsenal need to have a look at their defence. If Duncan Watmore's getting behind them that easily. But um, Duncan Watmore runs through. Team finish. And to be fair. That's because it's good pressure from Koscielny or Per Mertesaka. Whichever one it was. Pr- good pressure on him. Shoots it, check. Should have scored for me, didn't. And we were made, uh, and then we were made to pay for that. Now, actually, no, that was another. We had another chance beforehand. Uh, we were going for it. Lenz and Johnson came on for Toivonen and Fletcher, and we were going for it. We were really going for it, pushing forward. Ball comes over the top. Van Anholt, first time touch, just goes over the bar. I'm thinking, oh my god, we were going to get more, many more chances than that at the Emirates. Should have been 2-2, and then through scrappy fashion, which I think we should have dealt with better, but the game was lost by this point. Ramsey, pretty much tap in. Tap in at the tap in at the near post. That was it. 3-1 Arsenal. Bang set, game over. You know, but generally today, right, I couldn't fault Sunderland. I thought we did really well. It's certainly the most positive I've been for a while in a defeat, which is saying something. Most positive I've been for quite some time. If we, but we need that standard next week against Watford. There is now no reason for us not to do that because Watford's a team, with all due respect to them, we should be getting a result against. Um, all I can hope for now is results go in our favour. I said before this weekend, if Norwich, Bournemouth, Villa and Newcastle, they all got beat, I could tolerate a loss against Arsenal as long as we're putting a performance and didn't lose by a comfortable scoreline. Villa drew, annoyingly. Thanks, Southampton. You had to beat us but draw against Villa. You want us to go down, like? Um, and then, thankfully, Nor- Norwich got beat. Now I'm just hoping that Chelsea beat Bournemouth and Liverpool beat Newcastle. 
I'm praying I'm wrong, but I think Newcastle's going to beat Liverpool tomorrow. But let's see what happens. So, like I said, please God, let Sunderland beat Watford next week. And can results go in our favour? So, Chelsea, Liverpool to win today. And then the four teams I've mentioned, Norwich, Villa, Bournemouth and Newcastle lose next week. I know I've mentioned that a few times, but I'm a superstitious little idiot. Thought I was going to swear there, didn't you? Um, look, guys, thank you very much for watching. I've been quite positive for a defeat, which is the first, because I'm usually raging afterwards. But let's just see what happens. So let's see you next time, and hopefully in a week's time we'll have another three points on the board. See you later.